Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. Welcome back to another video. All right, my peeps. So this one, I am going to be giving you some information. And I am also going to be reasoning a little bit with you all. Right? We knew this day was coming. But it's the first time we are seeing some um, concrete information out there. That the IPL is trying to... I don't want to say put an end to ICC tournaments. But they want to be the main stay where cricket is concerned. So I was doing some reading yesterday and I came across an article that is saying that allegedly IPL top fear people, they have actually offered deals to six England players trying to convince them to quit international uh, cricket. You understand? We're going to talk about it because there are quite a few things in this that I have to, that, that I want to I want to tackle. We're also going to take a look at a test game that is going on between Sri Lanka and uh, Ireland. We see where Sri Lanka, they were able to score a 704 for 3. Yes, my viewers and subscribers, you heard me right. 704 for 3, declare. So we're going to take a look at those two things. So just give a listening ear until the end. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, just go right ahead and hit that subscribe button. Alright, so let us start off with this IPL um, thing. So I am taking this one from the circle of cricket. This is not my information. This is not me making up things. This is not me doing the research and coming up with the, with the results. This is me sharing some information from the circle of cricket. You know, it's not my information. I will give my opinion in between about the concrete information belongs to them. So... The headline says, IPL franchises offer handsome deals to six England players trying to convince them to quit international cricket um, based on report. You understand? So this is this is very this is this is something that I don't want to say we saw it coming, but at the rate that these people are going, you know, you, you could almost say that boy they're trying to take over. They are not only giving contracts to play in the IPL. Remember, they are owning franchises around the world. Um, so they want to know that they have cricketers and retainers that can go across the world and play. And they're looking for elite cricketers that will get the standard of the cricket up. You know, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know, no, my peeps. You see, the funny thing about it, I can almost guarantee you that these people, they are not going to try to convince the top Indian cricketers to quit international cricket so that they can um, give them, you know, let them play franchise cricket around the world. That's not going to happen because even though the franchise people over there in the IPL, even though they are trying to own um, teams all around the world, the main thing with Indians, they want to see their, their cricketers dominate the international level. I can assure you that. So these people, you see what they are doing? I don't know if I'm a conspiracy theorist or what, you know, but... England, they are the team, you know, that they, I don't want to say they have the most threat where white ball cricket is concerned, but this would, this would be a perfect way to start to clear up the way for India to start winning some, some, some white ball tournaments. But you know what? Let me go down in, into, into this article and, and thing. They say the only obstacle in such a scenario could be receiving NOC from cricket board, right? Let me go down now. So they say, with the expansion of the lucrative uh, T20 leagues around the world, cricketers are finding it hard to strike a balance between franchise cricket and national duty. They say, in July last year, England's ace all-rounder Ben Stokes called time on his ODI career, citing that it was unsustainable um, uh, for him to play all three formats amid the busy schedule. So that is what Ben Stoke did. People might be wondering if this is going to affect West Indies. Probably only Nicholas Puran. And here is why. He's the only player that we have playing at a high level that still represents us. Well, Jason Hola, 
I'm not too sure if they're gonna if they're gonna offer Jason Hola that sort of deal based on his on his age. Well, he still has a couple of years to play T20 cricket. Shemran it might, but the three main guys that are in the IPL from the Caribbean that are you know you can't say teams would would want. Um, Russell, even though he's not on top right now, uh, Narayan and Hetmeyer, those guys not playing any international cricket for us. And as much as how we are holding hopes that, you know, they will, they will return. But if these guys are offered deals and they take it, the Caribbean people will only complain and curse. But I have to call a speed a speed. These guys aren't playing any cricket for us. So I couldn't care less if they want to sign deal or not. You understand? It would be nice if they would make up them, their mind to play cricket for us. But based on how we see these guys um, going, it doesn't seem as if that's going to happen. So if they want to do that, then fine. Poor and, and well, Joseph. Poor guys like Puran and Joseph that are, that are out there playing. And you know, teams would probably want them, you know, um, those are the two guys I would definitely would want to see. You understand? It's it's pretty harsh to say this um with somebody with the talent that Shimran Hitmeyer has, but he's not playing any cricket for us. So if that is what he wants, then you know I can understand. He can go, but somebody like a poor and a Joseph that is still willing to play cricket for us, I definitely would want him to do something like this. You know, um if it was back in the days where we had people like Bravo, um, Gail. Polar, these guys were mainstays in the IPL, but they were still playing for us. If it was back in those days, then I would be more worried. You understand? Only those, only a couple of guys we have playing at the at the IPL level that 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 I would be worried if they if they take. Let me go down in the article some more. So it say no. A report published um in the in the Times London claims that owners of the IPL franchises are trying to convince as many as six leading England players to quit international cricket and sign hefty annual contracts ranging up to £5 million in order to play T20 leagues around the world. Hmm. They say nearly all 10 IPL franchise owns te own teams in various leagues, including CPL, South Africa T20 League, Global T20 League in the UAE, and upcoming Major League um, T20 in the US. So, you know, you can understand why they would be recruiting like this to, to, to and thing. So they say the Times report quotes, and I quote, Initial discussions have taken place, um, taken place after at least six England uh, English players, including some international stars were approached by IPL franchise owners and asked whether, in principle, they would accept a deal that would make an Indian team their main employer um, rather than the ECB or an English county. So, well, if this is happening in India, you're not going to see them reporting it, but England, if they get any sniff of this, they're going to report it. They say, this development follows discussion among players' unions around the world about the potential implications of 12-month franchise contracts, which would be a significant step towards the football model of elite players being primarily contracted to their team and released for international duty rather than the other way around. So this is very interesting, my viewers and subscribers. As I said, this is breaking stuff. Um, this is the ECB. Um, you know, this is the, the, the London Times reporting on it. So we're going to continue to keep a close eye on this. And as things develop, then, you know, we will definitely, um, we'll definitely keep you guys in the loop as it relates to how things are going. But these are, these are serious times where cricket is concerned. And, you know, we're going to have to look and see what ICC is going to do to try and compete with this. So we're going to leave it right there for now. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about that test match between Sri Lanka and um, Ireland. You know, Sri Lanka, well, Ireland, they started off extremely well. You understand? You know, they made 492. 492 is pretty good um, in, the, in, in our first innings. But they were not um, prepared for what Sri Lanka were going to do. You know, the Sri Lankans, they were able to get 704 runs for three wickets 
inside their first innings. You understand? So let me just give you a couple of top scorers. We had a couple of guys making centuries in that game. So Paul Sterling scored 103 and he would have become the second Irish cricketer to score hundreds in all three formats. You understand? I think it was Kevin O'Brien that was the first one to, to, to do that. So he got 103. Um, Tucker, the wicket keeper, got 80. We also had Balburnie getting um, 95. So those were the main um, guys there. Uh, we also had another Centurion. How could I miss this one? Um, Andy, Mark Bra well, not not Andy, he didn't get a, he didn't get a century. We had Curtis. Curtis made 111 for um, Ireland also. And in reply, in their first inning, Sri Lanka scored 704, as I said, with a couple of guys, all the guys in the in the in the top four actually getting century. Even a few of them, a couple of them got double century. So um the, the, the two openers, you know. Um, Nishan, he made 205. We had uh, Karatni, he made 115. Uh, Kusal Mendes made 245. And Angela Matthews, 100 not out. So, you know, very, very interesting times, my viewers and subscribers, where that is concerned. So, you know, just wanted to give you guys some info on that. Gonna leave it right here for now, my peeps, but we'll definitely touch base again soon. Big up on yourself.